Hi, I'm David Maldo, and today I'd like to take a first look at Zoom events. Now, before we jump in, a little context. Some of you might have a couple questions. First, some of you may be asking, well, wait a minute, how could we be taking a first look at Zoom events? We've been doing Zoom events for a year and a half now. Zoom events is actually a completely new product. We have Zoom meetings, Zoom webinars, Zoom phone, Zoom events. It's something new and something we haven't seen yet. Second, you may be wondering, well, if we haven't been doing Zoom events, what have we been doing for the last year and a half? Well, for the most part, we've just been doing Zoom webinars and Zoom meetings and calling them events. And we've been feeling like something's, like something's missing. So let's just take one more minute to think about what makes a live event an event. If you think about a physical event, we have our auditorium. That's where we get our keynote speakers. That's where we have our panels. And a Zoom webinar is basically the virtual equivalent of that. A physical event will also have smaller discussion rooms and Zoom meetings are the virtual equivalent of that. But at a physical event, we have a lot of other stuff wrapped around the auditorium and the meeting rooms that help to make it an event. One big thing is physical events have a lobby, a place outside of the auditorium, outside of the meeting rooms to collect ourselves, check the agenda, look at our personal itinerary, look at information about the speakers, information about sponsors. And from an event producer point of view, a place to sell tickets. You might want to sell tickets to your event. Now, there are some existing online platforms that you can use with Zoom meetings to host online events. And I've worked with them producing events over the last year and a half. For the most part, they were really designed to sell tickets online for physical events. They weren't designed for this. You can add links to Zoom meeting rooms in there, but the workflow was really hard. From a, a producer point of view, it was very difficult. And the workflow isn't really right from uh, an attendee point of view. They complained there was too many clicks. It was too hard to find the sessions. It worked. You can do Zoom events using these other platforms, but it really wasn't ideal. So my friends at Zoom tell me their goal is to fix this problem with the new Zoom events platform. So let's take a look from an attendee point of view. I was just invited to my first Zoom event. I was invited to Zoomtopia. I got an email from Zoom with a button saying, click here to register for this Zoom event. I also saw on their website, there was a link. Click here, just like anything else. So I clicked and it took me to this page. So here we have the registration page. As I would hope, there's a big blue button to register. You don't have to look around for it too much. And this event is free. And I noticed that it says sessions may be streamed to the lobby. That's important. I'm going to explain that later. But for now, let's scroll down. And there's some information, a description about the event, as you would expect. And I see three tabs here. The first is sessions. So let's take a look. So already you could see this is more than just using Zoom webinars. There's, there's some structure to it. We have an agenda. Let's click on the first session. Uh, and there's a video here. Nice, so a little, looks like a one Hello, minute teaser Eric. video. Hey, there's I'm Eric. I'm coming to you today from a summer session. Very rude of me to, to mute Eric, but I just wanna show you that script, you know, there's Oded. Uh, you could put a little promotional video about the session and a list of the speakers and information about them. And you could see for each session, it looks like, there we go basically the same thing. So already this is feeling more like an event and less just like and less like just an invitation to a webinar. So going back up to the top, so let's scroll down and see what the next tab is. We have our speakers. Now this is great and I love the fact that this is on the registration page before I've decided whether or not I want to attend. There might be just some amazing speaker that I know this person and anywhere they speak I'm gonna I'm gonna go to their event and I can see exactly what session they're in and then decide whether or not I want to register. And the third tab, and this is really an important one, sponsors. In, in a lot of ways, sponsors make your physical events. You got to give your sponsors love. Same thing with an online event. Uh, you really want to, to, to promote your sponsors. And we have a list of sponsors, and it looks like when I click on each one, there we go. They can upload their video. Great, so we have our speakers, our sessions, our sponsors, is everything I want to know about the event, let's register. So registration was basically just logging into my Zoom account and answering a few questions. And the page is the same, except now the registration button says join lobby. One last point before we join the lobby. Let's say I'm registered to multiple Zoom events, or, or let's say I, I, I've lost this link and I want to access this event. How do you find out where all your Zoom events are? Well, since it's, it's Zoom hosting all of them, you could just go to the Zoom website, zoom.us, and under solution, go to events. And as long as you're logged in, if you click tickets up here, it has a list of every event you're registered for. I'm only signed up for this one event. 
So let's finally go ahead and join the lobby. Sorry, I've never taken this long to get to the main course of a demo before. And an app opened on my other screen. Let me maximize it here. And we are in Zoom Events. It is an app, it's not on a website. That's actually not too surprising. Zoom has a preference for using their apps, Zoom meetings, Zoom webinars, over a web uh, version of the experience. It just gives them more control over the experience as a whole. So at the top right of the app, we have a countdown for the event, it's nice. And in this main area, there's an image there now, but earlier there was a video. I like the idea of being able to put a video there, uh, just to be able to explain the event and hype it up. One thing that really excites me is, remember that note before we saw that some events may be streamed to the lobby? That means I, I'm assuming we'll see them right here. Now that for me is, is a no-click experience. I'm not, to, I'm not gonna have to click to see every single session. Uh, one of the problems I've had with using some of the existing platforms, it was, it was a lot of clicking around on agenda pages to try to find your way into the meeting. I love the idea of it just being here. I also believe I read that they're gonna support a lobby chat. That is, it is also something I love. It's something that's missing from online events, a way to interact with people in between sessions. We'll see if we have that enabled for this event. The rest of it is pretty simple and we want it that way. We don't want something complicated. I've had a lot of complaints that these online event sites, there's so many things to click and so many places to look, people get lost. We want our, our sessions, our itinerary and our sponsors. So let's take a look. This is pretty much how it was set up in the registration page. We have our list of sessions. We have our promo video and information on each one. But there's one other thing. When I click this, I was in here before, it turned gold. It put it in my favorites. It gave me a ticket for it or something. And what's really cool is you can see how many other people did it as well. When I unclick it, the number goes, goes down one. You can see some of the sessions I've, I've selected already. And what that does is, let's go back here. Now when we go on itinerary, it only has those sessions. I just made my schedule just by looking through the session list and clicking on the ones that looked interesting to me. And I even click some that are at the same time. Maybe I can bounce in between them if they're both interesting. But at least I'm all set up now. I don't have to open my separate calendar. Uh, it, it was a lot easier than it is with a, a lot of other solutions for events I've used. And finally, the last tab, sponsors. Basically the same thing, a little bit bigger uh, than we saw on the registration page, but <laughs> we gotta love our sponsors. We can't have an event, can't have a lot of events without them. Okay, so a few initial thoughts. Well, from an attendee point of view, I think there's a lot to like. It's streamlined, it's easy to register, it's easy to find the information I'm looking for, easy to find the sessions, and we'll wait and see, but hopefully it'll be a more interactive experience and feel more like an event than the typical webinars that we've been going to. But before I can give a complete opinion on it, I really need to see how easy it is to produce an event. How do you set up the tickets? Can you have different kinds of tickets? How do you set up the recordings? How do you set up the webinars, the meetings within the sessions? How do you add the, the speaker information? Are there notifications, email notifications to registrants? I really need to see all those settings and work with them before I can tell you what I really think about this. But from my first look here, it definitely seems like the Zoom team is on the right track with Zoom events. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.